Friday, link in description. Link in description if you want to check out. I'm gonna drop this part right out. Greatly, greatly appreciate anybody, anybody that listens to the song. On my YouTube show that as well. If you want to get little clips of the music I drop. anyone who does so pretty please thank you um i was looking at some stats just now uh about um hold on okay so the, doing some surveys just asking about pride american pride in particular <clears throat> how many americans are proud to be uh, american and 38 percent said extremely proud 27 percent said very proud and that makes about 65% of people that are proud of the country. And then 22% said moderately proud, 9% only a little, 4% not at all. So people might see 65% and say, oh, that's pretty good, 65% people are proud of the country. No, that's terrible, especially when your country is America. Um, um, and only 38% saying extremely proud. That's a problem, guys, because you have to understand. Okay, I've got, I've got, I want to try this trigger. Peanuts, yeah. understand there's a difference between your country and um, your leadership your leadership is relatively speaking here today gone tomorrow so even if you're upset at that, Upset at your president, you're upset at your government, your governor, you're upset at your mayor, whatever the case may be. Your country is supposed to represent something. Your country is supposed to stand for something, and that's what you should be proud of. So I live in South Africa. Our government is shit. I'll tell you that from right now. It's terrible. It's one of the most corrupt governments in the world. During COVID, when they were locking everything down, um, I'm even scared to say the word COVID, man. These, you know, on YouTube sometimes. Anyway. 
Um, the state government was shutting everything down, and uh, the the so people had to stay inside. That didn't last very long because we, we weren't very compliant. But you know, for the for the period of time that it did last, we had a COVID relief fund, so money that was given to people that were forced to stay at home. So this was mainly for poor people. Guess what happened to that money? The government spent it because our government is notorious for taking public funds and buying mansions and cars and stuff like that. Like, do you know how fu- like just evil you have to be to take money that's meant to be going towards people that are struggling, that are poor, that are just trying to survive and, and just eat it, literally eat it. Because no one, bro, there are projects to develop housing in low income neighborhoods and and stuff like that and and uh, in some places they didn't have clean drinking water so there were projects to like um, develop uh, infrastructure or pipes that could, could, could transport water into these neighborhoods into these regions and stuff like that they, they ate the money they used it to buy cars they used it to send their skids to private schools and so forth we know that they're doing this when you want to get a driver's license in this country, it's extremely difficult because the system is so corrupt. To the extent that everyone knows that if you want to get a driver's license, more than li- more likely than not, you have to pay. You have to pay bribes to the people that are testing you at the station. At the traffic department. Most people just pay bribes. I didn't pay bribes, thank God. Praise the Lord Jesus. But I was fortunate that I got a good woman who was I failed the first one and then the second one I passed the second instructor was also a good dude and also that traffic department yeah it's 50 50 it's corrupt but if, you, if you're lucky I got lucky twice if you're lucky you can get someone who will assess you on your merits and not fail you because you didn't pay them a bribe but I know a lot of people that had to pay because they kept getting failed over and over. I know a guy that had to take his test eight times. You know how frustrating that is? Because he tried to do it the legal way. He tried to do things legally, failed eight times, and eventually just paid. He paid the bribe and he got his, he got his driver's license. So my, con- my, my government is corrupt. Our leadership is deeply, deeply, deeply rotten. And the country is collapsing before our very eyes. And there are a lot of issues. Crime is on the up and up. Um, poverty is up, is is, is, uh, is increasing. We're having issues with electricity because they did not invest in um, the, the the power stations. They 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 haven't renovated the power stations in decades, and and so now the infrastructure there is failing. So we have constant um, blackouts now. Same thing with the water, which I didn't think would be a thing, but we have random water shortages sometimes. Like, you'll just open the tap and there's no water coming out and you don't know when it's going to come back. There was a situation where a neighborhood did not have water for um, three months or something like that. Some, bro, no, no, it wasn't. It was 50-something days. 50-something days. I, I, yeah, if I remember correctly. So what would happen is there would there'd be this massive truck that would go to that neighborhood and people would come out of the houses and then collect water in bottles and stuff. And that's, that's, that, would, that, that would be a water. The water for bottling, for drinking, for cooking, so on and so forth. You get it in this truck. Because the government, instead of using taxpayer money to uh, invest in infrastructure that can allow water to free, seamlessly flow throughout these neighborhoods, they, they ate the money. They, they, they ate the money. Now I have a network outages from time to time. I don't know, that's not as prevalent, and I hope that was just a one-off thing, because I haven't been hearing much reporting about it. But anyway, I say all that to say, our government has issues. But I don't hate South Africa. You know what I'm saying? I love South Africa. I love the people. I think the people are wonderful. Um, I 
think the flag is sick. I think the, the, the country itself is beautiful, the landscapes. Wonderful country, wonderful people. We have a wonderful spirit. Um, I don't hate the country. You go to America now. Now you go to America. The wealthiest nation in the world. There's a lot to like. A lot, millions of people immigrate to America every day. Literally millions. How about fuck? Is it only 38% that is extremely proud? It makes me angry. It really does. Because people are very, very ungrateful. There's a lot to like. There's a lot to be grateful for. And a lot of these people that will say that they're not proud aren't even from poor neighborhoods. They aren't experiencing any sort of real hardship. They have good lives. But because of whatever information they consume on TikTok, on, 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 on social media, or whatever they hear from their friends in varsity, they go along with this narrative that they must hate their country. But why? Why? Why not be proud? Why not say, look, this is what my country represents. This is, I'm proud of my country because of this. And these are our core values and no one can take that away from us. So even if you have a, a bad president or whatever the case may be, whatever reasons you are for, for, you have for not being happy, even all, if all of that is considered, this is what like America it represents at its core. Um, therefore, I'm proud to be American. I'm proud to fly the flag. I'm just proud, proud, proud. No one can talk shit about my country. That's the attitude. That's the attitude anyone or any country should have. If your core values um, are aligned with that country, if not, leave. Why are you there? A lot of these people, right, that say they hate America, even if they're presented with the opportunity to leave, they would never leave. It baffles me. But if you believe in freedom, if you believe in in, in excellence, if you believe in in our prosperity of that nature and stuff like that, then you should be celebrating the country. Um, it's the most diverse country in the world. It has the highest population of uh, Indians outside of India, I believe. Indian Americans earn the most amount. Uh, they're the highest earning demographic in the country. What other, listen, what other nation can you go to where a minority like, like, like that can, can just become the wealthiest demographic by far too it's like it's not even close indians have earned so much money in america it's crazy and these and by the way this is not like um third fourth generation indian these would be people that came to america and in a matter of like a decade or two are rich the amount of stories i've heard of indians starting like 7-Elevens and then and then buying another one and then buying another one and then having like a little empire of like 7-Elevens or whatever department store and being rich and then affording their family with, with opportunities and with their kids with opportunities and their kids go on to be rich and so on and so forth. Like this happens within a generation with a lot of these people. Same thing with Asian Americans like, like, like East Asian, like you know, Chinese, Japanese, and so forth. Rich. Even Africans. So not, not like... Not not the black people, but Africans. So not like black Americans, but Africans, so like Nigerians, um, Ghanaians, so on and so forth, that, that migrate to America. They do very well. Economically. Very well. Nigerians are particular. Very well. That's something that, that, like, you should be proud of that. The economic opportunities your country provides for people. Millions of people every year from around the world uh, go to America to, in search of a better life. So the fact that uh, people are so ups like like upset at their country just it just bl blows my mind that the lack of gratitude. Man. And you know what it is? I said this before. They're not grateful. When you don't value something, you're way more likely to lose it. And that's what we're seeing right now. America is falling apart before our very eyes. The economy is in tatter. The housing economy is, 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 a, is a mess. Um, foreign investors are pulling out of places like New York for, you know, for several reasons I won't get into. Um, 
you're seeing that the border is wide open so illegal immigration is at an all-time high people from people on terror watch lists are in the country we just saw the terrorist attack in russia where like a hundred something people were just shot were gunned down and killed in, the, in that terrorist attack and people are speculating that something might happen in, in the u.s very soon who knows what because your borders are wide open and no one seems to care no one seems to think that's an issue if you listen to the mainstream media they were saying for a long time as recent as like a week ago that hey man this is not a real issue people keep saying that the border is a crack that the, we have a border crisis we do not have a border crisis that's what people on msnbc are saying that's what people that's what people on cnn are saying absolutely ridiculous the border is wide open there's a story about a young girl who got killed by an illegal immigrant beaten to death Beating up police officers and getting let out without bail. Stuff like that. It's a serious crisis. And if you don't do something very soon, you're gonna fuck around and find out. Oh my god, the thousands and thousands and thousands of people that have died because of the fentanyl crossing through your border. And this affects rich, poor, it doesn't matter. There was the, the celebrity, I forgot which celebrity it was. His son died of a fentanyl overdose. Because sometimes these drugs that you be getting, your cocaine, whatever the case, and whatever you're smoking, whatever you're snoring, it'll be laced with fentanyl and you won't even know it. And this is fentanyl that's pouring through the water. So people have been overdosed and they've been dying because of this stuff. And someone made the point, if you take a substance and it kills you and you did not know that that substance was with, inside of whatever it is you were intaking, you, went, you didn't overdose, you were poisoned. That's poison. Doing cocaine, you don't know that you're co- you shouldn't be doing cocaine anyway, but you're doing cocaine and you don't know that your cocaine is laced with fentanyl and you snort it and then you OD on fentanyl. That's poisoning. They didn't tell you that that should have fentanyl in it. But again, because the border is wide open, there's very minimal border restrictions. Um, that's not stuff that just becomes possible. So yeah, when you when you don't value something, you're just more likely to lose it, man. You got you got a bunch of spoiled people who only have negative things to say about their country and aren't willing to do what's necessary to protect it. And yeah, we're seeing the results. It's very unfortunate. Um, even with these upcoming elections, you know. I'm a data person. I'm not, I'm not interested in emotional arguments, you know. Whenever people talk about Trump, they always say Trump says mean things on Twitter. Trump said this, Trump said that. They always talk about what Trump said. They never talk about what Trump did. Look at policies, guys. Look at data. Compare one presidency to the next. When Trump was president, became president in 2016, they said a lot of things. They said, one of the things they said is, oh, he's going to start a nuclear war. You can't give him access to the nuclear post. He's going to blow us up, blah, 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 blah. Four years past that never happened. In fact, there were, new, there were no new wars under his presidency. And he brought the Middle Peace as close, the Middle East as close to peace as it had ever been with the Abraham Accords. And, and oh God, they were so close to signing a peace deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia. And he died. He sanctioned Iran billions of dollars have been sanctioned from Iran so it means that money could not flow into Iran. When Biden became um, president, he essentially ignored the Iran because he didn't do, he didn't do any work to further the work that had been done there. And he released those billions of dollars that had been blocked from Iran. And Iran took that money, gave it to Hamas, and Hamas went to Israel and over the year and to the seventh. And now we have Israel Hamas. Now we have Israel Hamas. You can directly trace this to Biden's actions. But Trump was the one that was going to start all the wars, right? Absolutely ridiculous. Russia and Ukraine. Uh, was a direct result of, of NATO expanding with US backing into Ukraine, saying we want, we want to include NATO, uh, Ukraine into NATO. 
create the US was backing this confidence or supported this foolish mistrust, those stances. Listen, we're not supporting anything NATO does. If you, especially if you are not paying us because yeah, there's a membership. It's a membership. It's a club and everyone has to pay their fair share. And there'll be many countries in NATO that have not been paying their fair share. And Trump is like, I'm not paying these games. Pay us or else we're just gonna leave you alone. We're not gonna be involved in any of this stuff. He, and he did not support this thing of NATO expanding either because he understood the implications. Biden supported it. And NATO said we want to improve your training. Putin said you're encroaching on because you know NATO has not been shy about its um, qualms with Putin's presidency and its its, its calls for him to be upended and stuff like that. So you know what it means when these people keep spreading further and further into his territory. Your enemies are at your borders. So he said, no, you're not going to include Ukraine in NATO because then that would be bad news for us. So he went to war. Whether you disagree or agree with it is irrelevant. If, if NATO just minded their damn business, wouldn't it? Ukraine bought a mass grave recently, bought land that can accommodate a million graves. If you need people to view it, they're seriously underreporting the amount of Ukrainians that have died in this war because they claim that uh, they claim that only 100,000 Ukrainians have died, which is absurd. It's so stupid. It's a lie because. They've gotten so desperate that they're recruiting 60-year-old men to fight in the war. They're literally looking for 60-year-old men to go fight for them. That's how desperate they are. That's how many men have been dying in this war. So they're running out of, literally running out of men. It's insane. This wouldn't have happened under Trump. Because it wasn't happening. Four years he was president. Russia made no major incursions under him. He, uh, uh, Putin made... Uh, with Putin, we saw that his incursions under Obama, we saw his incursions under Bush. He did not respect those guys. Under Trump, there was none of that. There was none of it. It didn't happen. Now people are bombing Yemen. America is bombing Yemen now. They're calling for war with Iran. If, if America goes to war with Iran, best believe it's going to kick off, man. World War III for sure. Because Iran is, is, is various allies. And then China is becoming emboldened to attack Taiwan as well. They're gearing up for that. If that happens, there are a lot of things that are happening all at once that will spell bad news for A lot of things are happening and some spell bad news for, for the world. So yeah, that's a problem. Apart from all the war stuff, the American economy was doing well. You know, black people at the time, this was the highest level of employment they had had in decades. Highest level of income, economic engagement they had in decades. They were earning more money they paid, more money under Trump than they were earning under Obama or Bush. The economy was doing well. Anyone who's been paying attention, if you're paying taxes, if you're, if you're paying for fuel for your car, if you're paying rent for your home, if you're looking at interest on your loans, stuff like that, you know, you, you would have noticed that th things have gotten worse under Biden. Inflation, though they'll swear up and down that there's no inflation, there's no inflation, there's no inflation. But people feel this. They know when they go to the grocery store that their money isn't stretching as far as it used to. These clowns will keep lying. The, the, the price of a Big Mac has always been a good measurement for how the American economy is doing. And Big Macs took, like, in some places, like, oh, like $8 for the burger by itself. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous, dude way too expensive. There's no such thing as a dollar menu. You don't really have dollar menus here in South Africa, but I know in America they used to have dollar menus. And there's no, that doesn't exist anymore, right? Let me know if I'm lying. Well, that probably hasn't existed for a while now. But it's gotten, it's gotten worse under one specific president. Uh -huh. 
So, you know, the economy is in tatters. Your global reputation is in tatters. It, Italy, I think it was in Italy, the, the, the state-sponsored media, they were, they were making SNL-style skits, making fun of Biden, because Biden is always tripping wherever he's going. He's always saying random shit, falling asleep. He was at some conference in China, they were interviewing him. And while he was in the middle of answering a reporter's question, he said, anyway, I'm going to go to bed now. He literally said that. Anyway, it's time for me to go to bed now. While he's answering a question, a serious question from the reporter, he sometimes forgets what he'll be saying something and in the middle of speaking, he'll be like, you just freeze and say, oh, anyway, never mind. Like, it's, just, it's so random. These, it's like signs of dementia. Meanwhile, with Trump, if you compare Trump, the way he speaks now to the way he spoke four years ago, nothing is different. He's the same. This guy gives two hour long speeches and rallies. Biden could never do a two hour long speech. <laughs> never. These are the things you should be looking at when you're trying to vote. Not like, did he tweet something mean on like, or, like all this nonsense. Because look at what the country is going through right now. You have to have your priorities in order, people. The future's at stake. And the thing that's terrifying is that these are things that affect everyone, not just Americans, because if you have a weak president, it can spell World War Three, And that affects everybody. So we're dealing with a voting class that doesn't know much about politics. So there's so many Americans who are so clueless when it comes to politics of of their own country. They don't know anything. They just know that orange man bad. That's what the media said. That's what CNN said. That's what MSNBC said. That's what some guy on TikTok said. Some girl on TikTok. Orange man bad. Don't vote for Trump no matter what. Vote for who I tell you to vote for. Instead of thinking and being, let me compare policies. Let me compare data from that four-year period to this four-year period, stuff like that. And then let me make an informed decision based on that. It shouldn't, you shouldn't be basing your decision off of like, who's, you know, another thing that drives me crazy. One of the biggest criticisms of Trump is that he's just not presidential. He doesn't speak presidential, doesn't act presidential. What you really mean when you say that is he, he doesn't act like a politician. Because that's what you've been trained to accept for many years now. Politicians, people who act nice, they act presidential. But then behind closed doors, the bombing of Afghanistan, the bombing Iraq, killing millions of innocent people over false claims of weapons of mass destruction. Obama, Bush. So you, you, what you're basically saying, you prefer someone that talks to you nice, makes you feel good. But then they're fucking up your economy. They're killing people overseas. They're doing all sorts of things that are jeopardizing not only your country, but the global, the globe, the global community. It's absurd. So what Trump says mean things on Twitter. Like, who cares? Like I said, there are no new wars under his presidency. None. He inherited wars from his, his uh, predecessors, and he, he tried his best to put an end to that, and he was successful in many regards. The rest of it, um, getting rid of certain terrorist groups and stuff like that. But yeah, um, vote with your brain, not with your emotions, please. I'm begging you, man, and be proud of your country. Be proud. Like I told you, South Africa has problems. I'm thinking of moving. And America is definitely in, uh, a wonderful place to consider. But, you know, you're just worried that it won't be there. That things will become so unstable and it become too dangerous to go there. Because when you hear stories like people on the terror watch list are pouring through the border, you're like, oh, I don't know. If I want to be there for anything, if I want to be there when... when if, hopefully, if if things kick off, 
if there's some sort of mass shooting or bombing or something, I don't want to be around when that happens. So all you can do is pray that these you know, like people make the right decision and they put the they prioritize the important things and make decisions based on policy, not like these emotional decisions based on who says what on Twitter. Like it's so absurd. You know, in, in the Dark Knight, Jim Gordon said about Batman, Batman's not the hero the city wants, but he's the hero the city needs. It's actually a profound concept. It's like you don't always get to pick and choose who your who your savior is. In 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 for most of history, the people that have been uh, elected to save a country or save any sort of situation, they're not you know, they're rough around the edges. So what? If they get the job done, so the fuck what, dude? You want a guy that's nice and has the perfect record but can't do the job? It's absurd. You perish. So you have to pick wisely. You have to pick very wisely. Don't think with your emotions. Think with your brain. Please, I'm begging you. Otherwise, we're all fucked. Anyway, rant complete. Let me pray and get out of here. You don't have to pray at the end of my videos. Dear Father God, thank you for this individual watching this right now. Thank you for making the whole unique and them on a path towards peace, prosperity, and purpose. Thank you for blessing this individual, the wonderful people in the life who love them, take care of them, bring the absolute best out of them. Thank you for maintaining the ones that are there the same thing. Thank you for blessing this person with spirit of gratitude so they can give thanks for all the wonderful things in life. And by giving thanks, they can find peace and contentment and attract even more blessings. Let your presence be felt in this person's life so they know that your God, that your real, that you're always going to love them and be there for them. Good health, long life, and happiness over it. This person and everyone that care about it, my name is Prince Jesus, I'm Prince Jesus, I'm Prince.